Once, as I was leaving a meeting at the Arturia house here in Mexico City, I noticed about 40 broken key beds in their dumpster. So I dove in and took them home to cannibalize, to my wife's dismay. We're gonna need the aftertouch sensor from one of them today. I couldn't figure out how to safely remove the keys, so I just resnered it. I took no pleasure from this, especially when at the end I figured out that by pulling the keys forward, then up, they could be removed shrapnel free. Next, I got out the 20 cm soft pot SparkFun sent me and started tinkering. I've already cut our pressure sensor to size. Now, I've been thinking about how to mount these together. Thought about maybe using two rulers, one ruler for the ribbon and then have the pressure sensor underneath and another ruler underneath. But then I thought it would be, it would get awkward wiring. And then I realized that the soft pot has this sticker section that's wider than the actual sensor. And it's quite a bit wider than our pressure sensor as well. So I'm thinking I can probably just sandwich them together onto the same ruler and use the sticker portion of the soft pot to hold down the pressure sensor as well. So let's try that. Yeah, it's not super easy because the soft pot plastic is actually quite stiff, so it doesn't bend very well around the pressure sensor. So maybe the solution is to use some double-sided tape as a spacer, which I have right here. Now, let's do this symmetrically. Probably lost a lot of the stickiness already on the ribbon, but since this thing is double sticky, it'll make up for it. 21 centimeters on either side of this thing. See if it fits. Yep, fits there perfectly. So now we can remove the protection from the double sided tape and actually stick this thing on there. There you go. Now we can press down on this and have a nice solid structure for our ribbon controller. Now I can use a little cutting knife. Exacto knife, however you call it, and cut off the excess double-sided tape. Let's see how I can do this safely. I think I should use another ruler. There it goes. And that's looking good. So we're here we have our sensor sandwich for our ribbon controller. Let's work out a circuit to interface this with modular synthesizer. Already, I really like the way it feels. So let's measure some resistances. Pressure sensor first. So it looks like when I press down hard, there's about 200 ohms, I guess. And when it's high, it's over two megs, which is the limit of my multimeter. So that's, that's a lot of resistance. Pretty sure this is a 10K soft pot. We can just check this one by connecting the outer leads. And yes, it says 11.2, so that's within the tolerance of a 10K pot. So open up the notebook and brainstorm a simple circuit for this. I think I want to use a 9 volt battery so that this thing doesn't have to be tethered to the modular power. The cool thing about using a ruler too is that it gives you the markings, which can serve as guides for when you're playing it. And you can even use like a Sharpie or something to mark the notes that you want to hit, your target notes. So here's what I came up with on the protoboard. Basically, it's just some current limiting resistors and a transistor buffer, an NPN transistor buffer, and a little capacitor as a low-pass filter just to smoothen out the output. And I'm gonna use pretty much the same circuit for both sensors. So right now, it's connected to the soft pot. So let's look at that multimeter. And at the low position here, we're getting close to zero volts move up on the ribbon, we reach 
maximum, which is almost nine volts. It's a little less than nine volts because of all the current limiting that's going on. And that's nine octaves. Now let's connect it to the pressure sensor. The pressure sensor only has two terminals, so I remove the ground altogether and just connect the resistor here. And as we press down, our voltage goes up to 9.4, which seems to be the maximum voltage with the sensor. There doesn't seem to be much intermediary positions. I don't think you're gonna be able to do very expressive, minute stuff with the pressure sensor, but I mostly wanna use it to trigger envelopes or VCAs anyway. So I think this is gonna work. All right, so let's build it now. So I think we're gonna have to make a little box for this because we're gonna need to put a battery in there as well as a circuit and some jacks. So it's not gonna be so tiny. Make a header for the ribbon. I'll make headers for everything because you never know. So now we have this little board that we can actually detach from the sensors. We put this aside and start building the circuit that's on the schematics. For something like this, I don't even do any prior planning. I just look at the schematics and start putting parts on, just like I did on the protoboard. Start with pressure sensor right here. Let's define some rails. These are gonna be our power rails right here for the battery. Nine volts and ground. I'm gonna label that so it's clear to me which one is which. Power the external one and ground the internal one. And I'll label it here too, plus and minus. The pressure sensor doesn't have any polarity, so it doesn't matter which side I connect to what. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump it to nine volts. So that's going to power positive. The other side, is gonna get a 100 mega resistor to ground. You can actually probably tie this line right here to ground too. And that'll make it really easy for me to connect things to ground here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. As I start placing and soldering components, I like to use a highlighter and mark each connection I make on the schematics so I don't get lost. I soldered the two output jacks right on the strip board. That way, by mounting the jacks on the box, the board is already mounted as well. To make it strong, I anchored the jacks every way that I could, even soldering the switch terminals to free pads on the PCB and bridging the grounds together on the jack bodies. I had to cut some power traces and then jump them so the jacks wouldn't short them. time to check for shorts and test it. And it worked! So then I proceeded to drill holes and make some cuts to the plastic box I got in order to securely accommodate the circuit and the battery inside. I made a flat opening so the ruler could go into the box, then bent the ruler a bit with a slight S shape, so the part that goes inside the box is a little higher and the part with the sensors can go flush against the desk surface. tested this and it works. Two CV outputs, pressure and position. But I forgot to put in some kind of on-off switch. The LED sometimes saves your battery because you see it on and you remember to turn the device off. I have it connected to the no coast. The pressure output is controlling the dynamic section of the no coast, and the ribbon output is controlling the pitch into the one volt per octave input of the no coast. So.
and that's the sensor sandwich ribbon controller. Have fun with it. I have some good news today. I thought I was gonna have to get my mom to do it, but I actually got my first bona fide spontaneous Patreon donor. So thanks anonymous dude. You know who you are. These videos actually take a lot of time and effort to make. So if you're enjoying your weekly dose, please consider pitching in on my Patreon page. That way I can keep on making these for a long time. Thanks for watching. Next week, SynthCube's Ornament and Crime full kit review. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.